Hi, I'm Alex and welcome to Reader Rambles, a weekly podcast where I ramble about bookish topics and I help readers navigate life. It is actually episode 9. Last week I kept saying 9, I don't know why, but next week will be 10 and I'm very excited. I have something special planned for the 10th episode. So it's episode 9 and I have my Patreon pick. If you're new to this podcast, at the end of each month I have my patrons pick on a topic. You were really looking out for me last week when I said I really hope bookish quizzes win because today we are taking bookish quizzes. I will have them all linked down below if you would like to do them. I have 10 and I'm just going to get into it. Let's talk about my week. It is Thursday, February 24th at 11 11 a.m. So that's pretty cool. I have not had a horrible week, but yesterday just a lot of things like in the trans community have come about, like laws and things, and I just am pretty devastated. I'll link some resources down below if you would like to help us. Um, I luckily don't live in Texas, but Texas and Florida are really trying to not have trans kids exist and it's so exhausting to see. So if you could just help us out, we would really appreciate it. It's so exhausting to just endure all of this and so if you want to be a good ally and you just want to help out some trans kids, I'll link some resources down below. It is just so devastating. So today we're just going to forget about things and do some bookish quizzes. I'm going to try and get some book recommendations. Um, I also just put in my Karedathon library haul. <laughs> Basically I put some holds for Karedathon. It is happening March 7th to the 13th and I did like I'll have a library haul coming. I'm gonna do like a February book haul and a library haul. I'm still editing my January. I really just have I have to edit things and I don't want to for some reason. I have been using my library for audiobooks and ebooks recently because I've said that I'm on a library ban so I'm not going to be going to the library as frequently because I ended up getting fines and it's not good. So I actually just got the audiobook for The Wedding Date, which I'm currently reading, and it was for Borrow, which was so nice. So I'm able to listen to that and also read it physically. I'm obsessed. I just got to a sex scene and it was awesome. Jasmine Guillory is just great. I will just champion for her all the time and I this was only my second read from her, but I was thinking and I'm not going to hold myself to this because I haven't really been reading that frequently, so I am just going to make it a plan to at least read four of her books this year. And I have to check because I believe that The Royal Holiday might be a sequel. Anyway, I am currently reading that and I put in a I put in a couple requests at my library for a couple books I want to read for Caritathon. It is hosted by Monica Kim and Books with Chloe, and it is just a week of reading Korean authors, and I'm super excited. So I am still currently reading The Wedding Date. I have not touched Game On, which is an issue. Uh, <laughs> I really need to do that. Um, also, I started the audiobook for Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gelly, which is the Patreon book club pick. It's a bi-monthly book club where we read LGBTQI plus books and it is a rainbow theme. So February is red, uh, April will be orange, and so on. I am so excited. So I started it and it's really good. It's short. Apparently it's only like 197 pages. The audiobook is three hours, but because this is a dystopian, it's a dystopian Western about queer librarian spies and I really need to hold my attention. So I am not going to be, so it is a book that I need to have all of my attention for. So I can't actually just listen to it while I'm working or something like that. I need to kind of like listen to it when I'm playing a game or something. Also, speaking of games, The Sims Wedding Pack came out yesterday and <laughs> I downloaded it, but there's an issue because I swapped computers that I was having an issue 
where I couldn't make my like ba basically I started a legacy challenge and that means that I start like a whole generation of sims and you have to get 10 generations of those sims and so I had been on generation 3 and then I had to switch computers and then I did like the whole thing where I uploaded them and then I put them into the gallery and then I downloaded them to my my Mac now and um <laughs> For some reason, it won't let me change my sims to be siblings. It just says household member or fiance. And I even put that issue into like a sims help group on Discord. And uh, apparently a lot of other people were having those issues. It was just a lot of bugs and stuff. So currently in the sims, I am doing a scenario that's new where you start with no money and you try and become a millionaire and gain a million dollars. It's super hard, but the way I've been doing it is by like inviting millionaires into your house so then you can gain money off of them. <laughs> so I'm sure some people might care about The Sims, but if not, it's totally fine that the timestamps are there. But yes, those are my current raids. Um, I don't think I finished anything this week. Well, I read Hey Betty, which you can see in the background here. Wait, I'm on my webcam, so it's a little bit, it's right here. You can see it right here. I put up a reel because I was kindly sent a copy of that book uh, from Macmillan Kids, and it is so cool. I'll be talking about it in my book haul and my February wrap-up, so if you're new and you don't know, I'm a booktuber, so you can subscribe to my YouTube channel that I haven't really been uploading on. <laughs> I just, I just don't know why I've just not been feeling like filming or editing at all. I think I'm just mentally drained, but I am gonna get into the episode now. Uh, because that's kind of all that's really happening. I didn't really have much go on this week, so yeah, let's just get into the bookish quizzes because that's what I'm more excited about. And I'm excited to get some book recommendations. I will link all of the quizzes down below. And thank you to my patrons for supporting me and for voting because it's always a fun time. You can become a patron for $1. You'll become a paperback pal and join our community. You can have access to our Discord where we do watch parties and we do weekly activities where we all kind of like talk about a topic or a question that I give you and we all talk about our current reads and things like that. It's really fun over there. So if you are able to, I would appreciate it, but I totally understand. If you can't, supporting me is listening to this podcast, rating it, and reviewing, and yeah, let's get into the bookish quizzes because I'm super excited. Also, my timer might go off because I'm doing laundry right now, so I might have to stop mid-filming uh, or recording, so just a heads up for that. <laughs> Alright, let's do this thing. Okay, so I have a little notion spread. This is like a behind the scenes of my outline. Um, and let's just start with the first one. If 35, or uh, sorry, <laughs> if 34 out of 50 of these bookish things give you a boost of serotonin, then you're 100% a bookworm. Okay, let's find out if I'm actually a bookworm or not. Check off all that apply to you. When you find out the book you've been eagerly anticipating will be narrated by your favorite audiobook narrator. Um, now I don't really have favorites because I don't read enough audiobooks to have a favorite narrator, but my favorite is when the author narrates it. So I will not be checking that one off. Um, when you get to put the final book of a series next to the others on your shelves, yeah, I guess so. I don't really read series that much, but I have read series before, so. The first moment you walk into a bookstore or a library, yes. My thing is, like, to calm me down from anxiety is to, like, go to a library or bookstore. When I was in college and I would have anxiety, I would go to the library and I would just look at the books and it would be so healing. <laughs> um, when your friend reads the book you recommended, yes. When you hit exactly 50% on your ebook progress bar, <laughs> oh my god, yes. When your favorite author announces a new book, absolutely. When your favorite author's new book is even better than you hoped? Um, I mean, I guess so, but yeah, I guess so. 
when two characters who have been dancing around each other finally get together, yes. When a character and their best friend have a beautiful talk about how much they mean to each other, absolutely. When chapters start on the right page and end off on the left page, uh, yes, I guess so. <laughs> um, I don't really have a, I don't know, I was gonna do an episode before of like bookish pet peeves, but I don't really have any or many at all. When a cast member is announced for an adaptation, they look exactly how you pictured. Absolutely, yes. Um, when you didn't predict a book's twist the first time you read it, but once you reread, you understand. I mean, I've never done that before, so I can't check that up. When your favorite side character gets a spinoff, yes. Um, I'm trying to think if I've read any, but I don't know if I have ever read any spinoffs, but I would like to see it. A book smell, yes. Even though I don't really have a good sense of smell, I have a deviated septum, so I can't really smell a lot of, like, strong... Like, I can smell if it's strong, but I don't have a very good sense of smell. Um, checking out books from the library, yes, that I just did. Browsing the shelves of a bookstore or a library, yes. Finding the book you want on sale, oh my god, yeah. When I go to, like, a used bookstore, like... For instance, a map to the sun. I went to a thrift store and I got it for 99 cents. That was a steal. Oh my god, when your friend borrows a book and returns it in pristine condition. That has never happened to me. <laughs> when you read a book outside your normal genre and you like it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of an example. I mean, I have not really read many westerns, so I'm kind of liking a uh, queer... Oh my god, what is it called? Upright Women Wanted. Happy endings, yes. Or when you actually get like a ending and it's not ambiguous. Sometimes I hate the ambiguous endings. Then it's actually fun to kind of have your own interpretation of what happened. When a character who had a lot of really rough t plot points gets to be happy at the end of absolutely. <laughs> Big confession scenes. Um, yeah, I guess so. F um, finding amazing fan art of a book you love. I don't really look up fan art or make fan art, but reading fan fiction, writing fan fiction, I've never wrote it for books, more so for like TV and movies, but I will never reveal. <laughs> Because that's private. <laughs> um, sliding the books out of a box set. Oh my god, no, that does not bring me serotonin because it is so hard to do. And then I'm like so regretting it because then I have to put it back. When you find two, oh my god, when you find out two of your favorite authors are co writing a book, yes. But sometimes they can be a hit or miss. Looking at you, what if it's us? When an anthology announcement comes out and you love every author featured, yes, I love that. Meeting an author in person, yes, but I haven't done that in a long time. When was the last time when I, I think it was probably like 20, maybe 2017, attending a book event, yes, fun. Real organizing your shelves. No, that does not bring me serotonin because it is a hard. Oh my god, it's so much work. It's horrible. Spotting a favorite book in the background of a TV show or movie. Mm-hmm. When your library hold finally comes in. Yes. Putting a bookmark in place when you finish a chapter. Um, I don't know. That doesn't really bring me serotonin because it's something I always do. When you finish listening to a book. And you discover the library also has the rest of the series in audiobook. Yes, that technically kind of just happened to me. When your favorite book series gets a special edition. I don't know. I I think I don't know if I've said this before, but I'm not very materialistic, which is funny because I'm a Taurus. And that's what they're known for, besides being stubborn. But I'm not like that. Like, I don't really care for that stuff. When a book is announced, that sounds like everything you've ever wanted. <laughs> Icebreaker, basically. When there's an author's note, I l listen, I love author's notes because I'm always just curious to see and hear why an author wrote a book. I'm just always so interested. Signed books, I mean, I'm not really someone for 
signed books. Like, I'm fine if it's signed, but I don't need it. Like I said, I'm not materialistic, so I don't really need it. Um, but it is cool when that happens. When you take the dust jacket off a cover and there's a cool design underneath. Yes, the Icebreaker book has two skates embossed and it is just awesome. When a character from an author's previous book has a cameo. Yes, I love cameos. Because I'm reading Jasmine Guillory, I know that there are cameos of characters in her books, so I'm excited to just read the rest of them in order now. I'm um, just skipping the ones that I've already read, but I'm just excited to see who shows up. When you read something that makes you laugh out loud in public, Yes, I don't really read in public that much, you know, pandemic, and don't really go out, but um, just in general, when I laugh out loud at a book, yes. When you read something that makes you cry, <laughs> I don't know if that, gives, that brings me serotonin, but it depends if it's happy tears or not, so if it's happy tears, then yes. When you read something that makes you live text your friend, oh my god, that's like, that's how you know a book is good. When I'm telling my friends who've not even read it, and I just need to talk to somebody about it. When you see yourself as the main character, that does bring me a lot of serotonin. Bookshelves with sliding ladders. Yes, I like them. Shout out to Allie from Hard by Quarter. Hers is so cool. Um, seeing your favorite book get recommended on TikTok. Yes, even though a lot of my favorite books, that doesn't happen. And then, um, oh, reading? And when the edges of the pages are painted sprayed, like I said, I don't really care for that kind of stuff, so I'm not going to click it. But last is reading. Even though reading doesn't really bring me serotonin that much anymore, so maybe I won't. I don't know. I just am in a rut. Well, I'm an extreme bookworm. You checked more than 79% of quiz takers. <laughs> Hold on, let me go get my laundry and then I'll come back, but let me read this first. You're an extreme bookworm. You probably, you're probably the bookworm who gets tagged in every book-related post acquaintances and friends find because books are such a big part of your life. Um, I don't know. It's more hockey, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> like, even, like, people that follow me will send me things about hockey and that is how I know I have established a, br a good brand. <laughs> Okay, I am going to go and get my laundry, and I'll come back. Okay, I am back. Um, I'm trying to see how to make this sound a little bit louder. Hello? Anyway, I am back, and now I am going to continue the quizzes. Um, I feel like this is going to be my longest episode, which is fun because I've been wanting to do a longer episode. I have some plans in the works for future episodes. But let's get to the next quiz. Okay, this is called Reveal Six Things About Yourself and Get a Perfect Book Recommendation. Okay, I actually have to make sure that you can actually see this. There we go. Maybe this is the vibe. Okay, let's do it. Select your zodiac sign. I am a Taurus. Which of these bookshelves speaks to you? Um, I really like this tree one. So I'm going to say that one. Choose a place to frequent on the internet. YouTube, because that's where I am. Um, pick one of these animals. All a... Oh, I don't know what that is. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Kiwaka? I think is how to pronounce it. Um, fox. Lots of other cute things, but we're gonna go with a wom- Oh, no, I'm gonna go with the panda. I like the panda. Um, pick something you love about fall. Oh my god, I just- My microphone hates me, actually. Um, apple cider. Finally, pick a color. My favorite colors are orange and red. Oh, look at that. Okay, the first book recommendation 
is Among the Beast and Briars by Ashley Poston. Now, I haven't actually read this series by her, and if you're a fan of my YouTube channel, you know that I love Ashley Poston, so we're going to screenshot this because maybe this will turn into a video one day or I'll just read them because I want to. Um, hold on. Also, you might hear my, uh, hard drive right now, because it's, like, turning on, so I might have to eject, or eject it really quick. Okay, I'm gonna stop fixing things and just continue. <laughs> okay, uh, what are we doing here? Okay, so I got Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston, taking place in the kingdom of uh, peaceful and prosperous since the first king made a bargain with the lady who ruled the forest. Among the beasts and briars follows Karis, the daughter of a palace gardener. When she was young, she barely escaped the forest that killed her friends and her mother. For as Aloria prospered, the woods grew cursed and dark. When a new queen, Karis's best friend, Anwen, is crowned, Things that had been hidden in the woods emerge and Karis is forced on the run. Alongside a pesky fox and Karis is forced on the run alongside a pesky fox. And now it's up to the two of them with the help of a stranger of a strange powerful bear to find the lady of the wilds and save her home. Ooh, that actually sounds good. Um, is it a fantasy though? Because, hi, if you're new here. I don't really do well with fantasy, <laughs> but I'll add it to my list anyway. I think I have it on my TBR, but, um, hold on, I just have to make sure that you can hear me. <laughs> okay, let's get on to the next one. Can we guess your favorite book genre? My favorite book genre is contemporary, so I'm excited to see if they can pick a library design. The white ones look cool, but I feel like I would be terrified in there, so I'm gonna go with this one. Pick a bookshelf. Um, we're picking a lot of bookshelves here. I am going to pick this red one because I think it looks cool. It looks like it's outside. Pick some stairs. There is like a curved, uh, like a swirly stairs, uh, like a dark stairs, a pink stair, and then um, like white. And I'm telling this to the people on audio because you might not be able to see it. I know you can upload videos to um like spotify and stuff so if i can upload this one i will i don't know the pink one looks cool but I, the dark i mean the dark one the dark one looks pretty cool it looks like there's like lights under there looks like it leads to somewhere pick something to read on either like a nice living room a coffee shop uh there's like these blue cool chairs and then just a couch um, I would say a couch because that's usually where I read or in my room or at my desk when I'm listening to an audiobook. Pick a reading nook to snuggle in. I like this van one, but I also like this one with like the book. So I think I'm going to choose this one. Pick a lamp. Well, wow, this is really your, oh, well, it does say build an at-home library. <laughs> I don't think I actually read that part. Wait, is that really what it says? The library design for your house will determine your favorite book genre. Oh, okay. I missed out on that part. Pick a lamp. I'm gonna pick this big lamp just because this is the one that I have and I feel like that would be the most light, but I don't think any of these would really give you a lot of light. Maybe like this one, it's like a copper, so maybe I'll choose that one actually. Pick a reading style, audio, ebook, newspaper, or paper. I'm gonna say an audio. Um, pick an extra, like a beverage. Um, I'm gonna go with water. Oh, okay. It says romance. Everyone loves a good love story. You could read about romance all night and day. You enjoy meeting people and mingling to have a good time. Now, the latter is wrong. I do not. <laughs> I'm an introvert and I have social anxiety, so not really, but, um, I don't know. I guess I would agree, but 
Contemporary is my favorite, so I wonder what you have to pick to get contemporary. So maybe I'll try it again without any commentary, and I'll try and see if I can actually get it. Or I'll just do some brief commentary. But I would say, I don't, I wouldn't say romance is my favorite genre, but it's a genre that I like to read. Obviously, I'm loving what I'm reading at the moment, so I don't want to say no, but it's not my favorite. Um, let's see now. Picking the pink stairs. Historical fiction? <laughs> I got? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe contemporary is not here. Anyway, let's move on to the next. Who are you according to the books you love to read? What is your favorite dystopian society? None. <laughs> I mean, I've only read Divergent, so I'll go with that. The choices are Divergent, 1984, The Handmaid's Tale, and The Hunger Games. I've only read Divergent. What was your favorite book to read in school? Oh my god. Uh, to Kill a Mockingbird, Catcher in the Rye, Lord of the Fri Flies, and Gr The Great Gatsby. Lord of the Flies was my favorite, but it was my only one that I did read. What is your favorite teen romance book? There is Twilight, The Fault in Our Stars. Uh, to All the Boys I Love Before and Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. Now that's hard because I love Simon and I love To All the Boys I Love Before, but since I am a To All the Boys I Love Before stan, I have to go with that. What is your favorite fantasy book? Um, I'm not going to read the ones for this because there's one that we don't want. And actually, I don't have any for any of these because I've never read them. There's the book that we don't like. Um, Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, and the Chronicles of Narnia, all I haven't read. Um, I, I'm just gonna go with Narnia because I don't know, I haven't read any. Favorite childhood book, Green Eggs and Ham, Go Dog Go, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, and Magic Treehouse. I am gonna go with If You could, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. I actually have... I think it's If You Give a Cat a Cupcake, I have, because I did have a time in college where I was going to be a teacher, and I went to community college, and I did like two years for teaching, and then I decided I didn't want to do it, and I actually had to do like a lesson plan on uh, the cat book. What's your favorite nonfiction book? None of these. Love Does, A Pray Love, The Diary of a Young Girl, and Into the Wild. I haven't read any of these, so I'm just going to pick a random one. What's your favorite mystery book? Oh my god. Nancy Drew, Sherlock Holmes, The Girl on the Train, or Pretty Little Liars. All that I have not read. The Girl on the Train I own, so I'm going to pick that one. Favorite scary book? It, Goosebumps, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, and The Haunting of Hill House. All that I have not read, so I'm just gonna pick Goosebumps. Favorite science fiction book? None of these. <laughs> Fahrenheit 451, Ender's Game, The Martian, or A Wrinkle of Time. The Martian is one I know about, so I'm just gonna pick that one. Favorite book about dogs? Marley and Me, Old Yeller, A Dog's Purpose, or Because of Win Dixie. Now, Because of Win Dixie, I believe I saw the movie, so I'm gonna go with that one. I have not read any of these. Wait, oh, wait, well, why does it say what your favorite book is if it's not that? It's giving me a book, a character. You're Candace Stone. You're a blunt, no sense. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's, let's read that one again. Because <laughs> I, I didn't read that correctly. You're a blunt, a no nonsense kind of person who always has to share their opinion and be right about it. No, I don't agree with that. You're not afraid to do a little digging to find out the truth and will make sure it's revealed at all costs because your ability to escape, because of your ability to escape even the most uncomfortable of situations, you're always just trying to survive. I don't agree with any of that. And I thought they were going to tell me my favorite book. Well, I guess because I, I did do like my favorite books, even though they're not. Anyway, that wasn't a good quiz. And I just realized that Apparently my uh, camera was in the shot. I apologize. <laughs> now this is a fun one. 
give you a cool LGBTQ plus book to read based on your answers to these simple questions. Pick a quarantine activity, baking bread, making TikToks, journaling, getting into sustainable fashion, and playing video games. Playing video games, because I was playing Animal Crossing and Fall Guys and all of that stuff. Choose a 2021 bop. Stop Making This Hurt by The Bleachers, Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo, Serotonin by Girl in Red, Mr. Perfectly Fine by Taylor Swift, and Up by Cardi B. Now, I'm going to be honest, and Olivia Rodrigo is the only one I know. I have listened to Girl in Red. I like her. She's good, but I don't know. I would probably know Serotonin to hear it, but it's not something that is memorable. Which image fills you with the most serotonin? A rainbow against like graffiti that says love is love. These people kissing. I guess this is like a drag queen. Or just someone in a dress with like a feathers. People in like on a street and they're holding pride flags. Or a street where there's balloons that spell out pride. I'm going to say the pride flag ones. I like that. Reminds me of pride. Choose the weather that suits you, slightly overcast and humid, sunny and hot, steady drizzle of rain, crisp fall evenings with warm afternoons, or springtime breeze and chilly nights. I love spring, so the last one I'm picking. Choose a staple piece for your everyday look. <laughs> I always hate these ones because they do not carry to me. <laughs> a subtle piece of jewelry, weather, a leather jacket, Lipstick, combat boots, or a sweatshirt you borrowed. I would just say sweatshirt because I wear sweatshirts a lot. Um, what movie release are you hyped for? Spider-Man is the only answer because I still have not went to see it. Oh, okay. Um, this is The Bridge by Bill Coingsburg, which I've heard of. I've read his book, um, The Music That Happens, or The Music of What Happens? What is it? The Music of What Happens. I really like that book. It was good. Um, it has really good representation for men who have been sexually assaulted, and I thought it was a really good conversation. This is the bridge. Two teens, Aaron and Tilly, meet on the George Washington Bridge with the intention to jump off. Four timelines then ensue, one where he jumps, one where she doesn't. So it's kind of like the Midnight Library. I haven't read the Midnight Library, but, um, I don't know. I don't want to judge a book before I've read it, but sometimes these ones can be a hit or miss. This is a mental health and YA done fresh and with a lot of care. Okay, I actually, I like that. Let's screenshot. Okay, another I can tell if you're a bookworm or not based on your reading preferences. How often do you read? <laughs> okay, that, that kind of feels like an attack, almost. <laughs> All the time, maybe once a week if I can, who has the time to read if I find one that looks exciting? Maybe once a week if I can also, because that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Pick a genre, probably a classic, someone I've, something I've read before. I have to pick just one, fantasy, what's genre, what's, I hate those ones, what's genre? Like, no, give me an actual genre that I can actually, like, pick, because none of these I can pick. <laughs> like, um... So let's just say fiction, because this one says, hmm, fiction maybe? Oh my god. Anyway. Pick a place to read. Some place comfy with a hot drink and a nice view at my desk. No time to find a different place. My room, I guess. Reading chair outside. New bookstore, coffee shop. I love... I, whose video was I watching? I was watching somebody. It was either Ellie with books or Jack Edwards. Maybe it was Jack, and he went to, like, a bookshop, or he went to, like, a coffee shop or a bookstore to read, and I was so jealous. Because the Barnes & Noble near me closed, that's where I would go to read sometimes, and it's just sad. There is a coffee shop, but, like, coffee shops can be loud. Okay, what am I picking? <laughs> My room, I guess I'm gonna say. Well, does this say, well, it says pick a place to read, not, like, a place I always read, but I'll just go with that one for now. Pick a rule you have to follow for the rest of your life. Only new books, no rereads. Reread your comfort books, but no new books. Read at least two books a week. Never read again. Wait. 
really? That's a rule? Read at least two books a week? I wish. I wish I could do that, honestly. So I'm going to pick that one. <laughs> Manifest that. <laughs> Finally pick a library. A small library on like a little bookshelf, like a cluttered one. Ooh, I look at this one. It looks like a little moon. You like books. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I can tell if you're a bookworm or not based on your reading preferences. Okay. Maybe you have trouble getting into certain books, but if you have the time, you may reread one of your favorites. You probably don't set... Oh my god. You probably don't set a time... Set aside time to read, but you do enjoy the classics. I don't enjoy the classics, but I do not set time to read. You're absolutely right. <laughs> and that honestly just feels like a, an attack. It's just too accurate. I need better time management skills. Which new book should you read over the long weekend? Choose a fandom. Mm. There's Sherlock, BTS, Supernatural, Marvel, or like the MCU, Liverpool, FC, like, <laughs> okay. Um, or Disney. I'm gonna say Marvel, because that's the only one that I associate with. Choose a destination. Mexico, New Orleans, the Hamptons, Ghana, London, or Ireland. Hmm. London. I've never been to London. I would like to go. Choose a TV show. I don't really watch TV. So I've never heard of any. I mean, I've, I've heard of them, but I've never watched them. Nancy Drew. I didn't even know Nancy Drew was like a show. So we have Nancy Drew, The Witcher, The Leftovers, The Haunting of Hill House, Charmed, or Insecure. Insecure I've heard of because it is LGBT friendly and has like, um, like queer rep. Choose a job. <laughs> Excuse me? Private investigator, lawyer, cult leader, software engineer, photographer, or line cook. Um, let's go with photographer. I was, my when I was like, like in high school, I wanted to be a music photographer for like Paramore and stuff. I was like obsessed with that. Um, choose a book. We have The Murder on the Orient Express, Leo on the Offbeat, Beck, by Becky Abertali, um, Told the Whistle Up Before, Pis The Pisces, I've never heard of that book, The Royal We, we have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I think everyone knows what I'm going to go with. To all the boys a lot before. Choose a nemesis. Oh my god. <laughs> the paparazzi, a literal demon. Twitter trolls. The popular kids. Chat Jack the Ripper or yourself. I... Some of these BuzzFeed quizzes are really just trying to attack me. Um, Twitter trolls, I guess I'll go with. Choose your ideal 4th of July plans. None. <laughs> Taking a sound bath, going dancing, take out and weed, catching up on work, making art, chilling with friends. Where's a reading? <laughs> I mean, I know I said I don't read that much, but I would like that. Making art, I guess. Oh, okay. Here we go. We have The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I've heard of this book. I know it has trans rep, and I've been wanting to read it. I know it's good. I can't remember if I've screenshotted yet, so I'm just going to do it again in case I didn't. I'm happy because I was thinking, as I'm getting book recommendations, I haven't gotten many um, diverse books, but like in terms of like buy buy book authors. So that's nice to see. Um, we're going getting down to the wire here. I'm just going to open the ones so I can do them. Are you obsessed with books? Oh, the description says, would you lick a book? Absolutely not. What does this photo make you feel? <laughs> um, so it's just an open book on a bed with two pillows. I, I really feel nothing. <laughs> what does this photo make you feel? It is just stacks of books everywhere. I mean... I really feel nothing. <laughs> this feels like a therapy session where they like are asking you to see all these pictures and you tell them how it makes you feel. 
I don't know how I feel about this quiz. It's kind of weird. <laughs> I am going to exit out of this quiz because I just don't like it. I don't see it, it going anywhere. Now this one I can do. Answer six questions and we'll tell you six new books to read. Now this is what I'm looking for. Choose a location. New York City, Jamaica, Ukraine, or Rome? Oh. <laughs> um, I would say New York City because I've been wanting to go recently. Oh, so every time you answer a question, it gives you a book. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. So this is the Deacon, Deacon King Kong by James McBride. It's 1960s New York. Cuffy Lampkin, better known as Sport Coat, a deacon at a Five Ends Baptist church, has just shot a 19-year-old drug dealer in the face. Oh, okay. Effectively putting a target on his own back, residents trying to make sense of the shooting as the mystery behind it slowly unravels. Unravels. Sorry. Choose a book from your childhood. None of these are. Sideways Stories from Wayside School, Walk to Moons, Harriet the Spy, and Bridge to Terabithia. I'm going to pick Bridge to Terabithia only because I've seen the movie. I haven't read the book. This is White Owl Conditions by Tariq Shah. <laughs> and it says, Ant, who lives on the West Coast, flies home to Illinois to attend the funeral of one of his oldest friends, Ray. Picking him up at the airport is Ray's cousin, Vince. Together, they set out to drive to the funeral while untangling, untangling old hurts, popping oxy, and... I'm sorry? <laughs> and grappling with adult disillusionments. It's dark for sure, but if you loved Bridge of Terabithia, that's a-okay. <laughs> Whoa, okay. <laughs> you know, that would be a fun video to read books that are similar to your childhood favorites. I kind of like that idea. So if anyone wants to take it, go ahead. Yeah. I'm in a weird place with reading vlogs just because I haven't finished one and I just am burned out. A lot of these books are about drug dealing or like shootings <laughs> so far. Choose a TV show. Um, Grace and Frankie, Fleabag, This Is Us and The Affair. Now I've seen some of This Is Us. I've told you before, I'm not a big TV watcher. Now what are they gonna recommend for this? My wife said you may want to marry me. A memoir, ooh, this sounds good. Jason Rosenthal is the husband named in the heartbreaking 2017 modern love essay, You May Want to Marry My Husband. The essay was written by Amy Kroos Rosenthal, who was dying of cancer and who died just a week after it was published. Oh, my wife said you may want to marry me is Jason's memoir. Oh, I'm going to read that. That actually sounds good. The next question is, you're the underdog in a righteous fight. What are you up against? Big words is what I'm up against. Big Agribusiness, agribusiness, I don't know what that is. The federal government, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> Silicon Valley, or a natural disaster. Now, I'm looking for a book about a man made disaster, so I'm gonna click that for, I think it's for the Book Riot Challenge or Pop Sugar or something like that. It might be Pop Sugar. Also, I'm hoping to record the Book Riot bonus video hopefully next week, so maybe I'll get two podcast episodes. We'll see. This is a chance, the shaking of an all-American city, a voice that held it together by John Muallam. And it says, On March 27th, 1964, the very young state of Alaska was struck by what is still the most powerful earthquake in American history. A city that had been a beacon of progress in this new frontier, a manifestation of its resonance, optimism was literally torn apart. This is a chance is the riveting account of following those three days. Oh, okay. That sounds pretty cool. All right, next. Choose a vibe. Haunting, charming, heartbreaking, or magical. Let's say magical. Oh, The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lou. Set in the 18th century Europe, Natural Mozart hopes to become Oh, oh my god, is this the origin of uh, Mozart? This is so cool. Listen, I am getting really good recommendations from just this quiz alone. 
Set in 18th century Europe, Nannerl Mozart hopes to become a acclaimed an acclaimed composer, but her father has forbidden her to continue her practice once she reach, reaches a, mar a marriageable age. Set in 18th century Europe, Nannerl Mozart hopes to become an acclaimed composer, but her father has forbidden her to continue her practice once she reaches a marriageable age. When the future of her brother, when the future of her younger brother, Wolfgang begins to look brighter than her own. She finds a magical stranger who has the power to make her dream come true, but at a cost. Lou tells a gorgeous story about what it means to be forgotten. That sounds good. I have never read a book by Marie Lou, but I know she's good. Choose a topic. Friendship, faith, gentrification, or labor rights. Ooh, I kind of want to pick all three, so maybe I'll do that. Let's start with the first one, friendship. Ooh. We have When You Were Everything by Ashley Woodfolk. This is my favorite book. I, well, this is not my favorite book, but it's one that I really enjoy. It is, it, it says it here. Woodfolk pens a raw story about friendships growing apart. If you want to read a book about a friendship breakup, this is the one. It is so good. Let's see, gentrification. Oh, now the city be, this is The City We Became by N.K. Jemison. I actually have an audiobook for it. Now, this is Rust, a memoir of steel and grit. Um, this is Rust, a memoir of steel and grit by um, Elise, maybe, is that how you pronounce it? Colette Goldbach. Um, it is about her working at a steel mill and just like her life from that. Interesting. Well, that's, that's the whole quiz. Got a lot of good books from that one, or book recommendations. We don't know if the books are any good, but... Oh, well, we, we've made it an hour into the recording, so that's something. So let me do... What am I at? Is this the one that I just did? Okay. I think we only have one quiz to go. Yeah, here it is. Answer some date questions to get a new romance book recommendation will be our final quiz. On a dinner date, what would you order? Ramen, cheeseburger, salad, or pasta? I love me a cheeseburger. What's your ideal date from home? Netflix and chill, video chat. <laughs> video chat. Well, I mean, if you're long distance, yes, but take out or video games. Oh, now these are good. Now, none of them say reading. That would be a fun date, but I would say take out. That would be fun. It's Netflix and chill night. What steamy show are you watching? None. None. <laughs> I don't, I don't know about, I don't watch TV. Bridgerton sex slash life. Never heard of that. Sweet Magnolias, I think I heard of, or Virgin River. Um, I don't <laughs> I don't know any of these, so let's just go with Virgin River. Choose a fun activity for your next date. Paintball, wine tasting, beach date. Oh, beach date. That would be fun. Time for dessert. What tasty treat are you sharing with your significant other? Ice cream, souffle, donuts, or cake? I, I was thinking about donuts last night, so yes. Oh, so I have People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, which I have on hold from my library. I'm, like, loaning it at the moment, but I haven't gotten around to finishing, like, actually picking it up and starting it. So that is the end of today's episode. Thank you for listening. This was my longest episode, hopefully. I see that the recording says it was like an hour and something, so it might not be that long for you, but it might be a little bit long. I am trying to make the episode longer. We'll see what happens. Thank you for listening. If you would like to become a patron, you can click the links down below, pledge $1 to become a patron and join the fun. If you want more bookish content from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Pucks and Paperbacks and Twitter at Pucks Paperbacks. And I have a YouTube channel, Pucks and Paperbacks, if you want to follow me there. Thank you for listening. I will see you next week for hopefully, I think I'm going to do answering your assumptions about me. So leave in the comments a assumption that you have about me and I will feature it on next week's episode. I might just do a little bit of that for next week's episode and maybe do like two topics or something like that. Don't hold me to it but I'll see you next week. Goodbye.